If somebody did something really wrong to you and you later had the opportunity to take revenge or at the very least mess with their heads, what would you do? Well, we're going to see what Joseph does in chapter 42 of Genesis. Hey guys, and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk, and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for being here with us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. And by the way, if you appreciate this ministry and content, at some point make sure and hit that subscribe button, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We would love to have you as part of our family. Okay guys, so we are jumping back into our story and Joseph and how this is such a pivotal story for all of human history, uh, the whole Bible and all of human history. So we're jumping back in. If you haven't caught it before, at least go back to chapter 41 if you want to make much sense out of this. Um, I mean, technically you can sort of follow along if you don't, but you're not going to have the depth of understanding if you don't go back and catch at least chapter 41. So I'm going to jump in in chapter 42 here. This is right after we learn that the famine that had been predicted was here, and it was not just Egypt but the whole earth. And now, whether it was literally the entire globe or more than likely they were referring to the whole earth as just being the whole Middle East. Don't know, but that's generally the language that would have been used because that was kind of the known world for these cultures. So, uh, either way, that's kind of irrelevant to the point. So let's start in verse 42, right after we learn all of this. Now we're going to pick back up with Joseph's family. Now Jacob, we haven't heard about him in a while, Joseph's father, also known as Israel. Now Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt. And Jacob said to his sons, why are you staring at one another? Like, I don't know, they're all sitting around the campfire going, I'm so hungry. I don't know. It's kind of what I picture. Why are you staring at one another? He said, behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us from that place so that we may live and not die. Like, uh, fellas, let's have a family conference. Sitting around, twiddling our thumbs, staring off into space isn't going to feed us. There's food in Egypt. Put two and two together. That's basically the conversation, the Aaron paraphrase, that jo Jacob is having with Joseph's brothers. Then ten brothers of Joseph went down to buy grain. I mean, the famine is so bad, the shepherds aren't shepherding. I mean, think about that for a second. The ten brothers, right? Notice there's one missing. The ten brothers <laughs> go up. They don't even have sheep to take care of at this point. Think about that. Then ten brothers of Joseph went down to buy grain from Egypt. And from Israel, it would have been down both north-south and also in terms of elevation. Sometimes they measured it that way as well. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, I am afraid that harm may befall him. Now to refresh your memory, all the way back in chapter 29, we learn about Jacob's love for Rachel. And Benjamin is the only other son that he had with Rachel. So once again, there's some favoritism going on because Rachel is the one that Jacob, Israel, truly loved. So we see this yet again. Joseph was the first, if you don't remember that from our previous series, or if you were bad and you didn't actually watch some of the other videos. Um, go watch the other videos. All right. So the sons of Israel came to buy grain among those who were coming, for the famine in the land of Canaan, or sorry, for the famine was in the land of Canaan also. Now Joseph was the ruler over the land. He was the one who sold to all the people of the land, and Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Now, if you were Joseph, honestly, what would you do? Seriously, tell me in the comments. You don't have to get graphic if you don't want to, but would you take revenge? Are you like me and you'd like, you're like, dude, I know it's wrong, but everything in me would want to take revenge on them, but I hope that I wouldn't. 
Um, what would you do? Let me know in the comments. And again, as I've said before, any interaction you take on this channel helps us grow because YouTube realizes that there's value to the videos. So not just for the sake of telling me, though I'm curious, but also if you want to support the channel, tell me in the comments, interact a little bit. What would you do? I, I'm afraid of what I might do. I, I generally believe myself to be a person of integrity, but after all of that, I would hope that I would do the right thing. Let me know. All right, now Joseph was ruler over all the land. They bowed, oh, sorry, okay, so bowed their faces to the ground. Verse seven, when Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he disguised himself to them and spoke to them harshly. So Joseph, or Joseph, Joseph, Joseph is entering a little subterfuge here. He's picking up some of the habits that his daddy no doubt taught him. He, he's gonna play a game with them. Ultimately, we're going to learn, I believe, that the game was ultimately about testing their hearts. That's my understanding. Uh, scripture, I don't believe, explicitly states why he does it. I believe that it's obvious that it was to test their hearts. Uh, but that's opinion. And as I've said before, we need to interpret based on fact, and we can apply with opinion that's based on fact. So check out my series on how to understand Scripture, The Four Secrets to Life and the Bible. So anyway, verse 7, When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he disguised himself to them and spoke to them harshly. And he said to them, Where have you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. But Joseph had recognized his brothers, in case you missed it, although they did not recognize him. So to make it perfectly clear, we believe Moses wrote Genesis. So whoever it was that wrote it, assuming Moses, Moses specifically wanted to make it really clear that his brothers didn't recognize him even though he recognized them. Joseph remembered the dreams which he had had about them, and that was back in Genesis 37. So I'll put a card up here for Genesis 37. Joseph remembered the dreams which he had had about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to look at the undefended parts of our land. And it would have been rational from a military standpoint in a great famine when you have lots of food, it would be completely expected that there would be spies and some of the other countries would be wanting to go to war with you. Because whoever controls this grain supply has control over the entire region and will become the rich superpower. So it is 100% right for, for Egypt to be concerned about spies. And that's what uh, Joseph is using to his advantage I believe, to test the hearts of his brothers. But remember his dream back in 37 was that he'd be the star and they would bow down to him and so on. And they, of course, objected to that. Here we are, they're bowing down to him. And aside from Pharaoh, he's the biggest star there is. Uh, well, obviously, other than God. So, verse 10, they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We're not spies. Don't kill us, please. We just need food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. <coughs> right. Honest men that sold Joseph into slavery. Well, threw him in a pit to kill him. If it wasn't for, I believe it was Reuben. If it wasn't for him, they'd have killed him. And they, they're so honest that they threw him in a pit, planned to kill him, then sold him into slavery, then took his multicolored robe, uh, tore it, covered it with blood, presented it to their father, and led their father to believe that animals had slaughtered him and kept their mouths shut this entire time about it. Oh yeah, they're honest men, all right. <laughs> no, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. See, they had so long made peace with what they had done that they probably honestly believed they were honest men at this point. Maybe a little pang, maybe the Holy Spirit poked them a little bit. God reminded them what they did. I don't know. Verse 12, yet he said to them, no, but you have come to look at the undefended parts of our land. But they said, your servants are 12 brothers in all. So they are now being honest, just in case he had some way of checking up on them. Because remember, they don't know who he is. They think he's just Pharaoh's second in command. And he is, but he's more than that. Um... 
Your servants are twelve brothers in all, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest was, is with our father today, and one is no longer alive. Oh, conveniently left out the part where you sold him into slavery, and you can't know whether he's alive or dead at this point because you sold him into slavery. But in their dishonesty, they just said that he's dead because they knew that they couldn't produce him. Hmm. Honest men, all right. You see the, the parallels that God's drawing between integrity and a lack of integrity? Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, you are spies. By this you will be tested. By the life of Pharaoh, so now he's bringing the full weight of the government behind it by swearing on Pharaoh. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Now, why would Joseph do this? Ultimately, we don't know. Scripture does not tell us why he does this. So this is just interpretation. This is just me guessing at the why. But I think he did this for a couple of reasons. One, I think Joseph wanted to mess with their heads. I don't blame him for that. I think he just wanted to see who they really were and test their hearts and have a few sorrowful chuckles about it at the same time. But more than that, I think he wanted to see whether his brother Benjamin, who he apparently had no quarrels with because he was also the son, the favored son of Jacob and Rachel, he's his own full blood relation instead of half blood relation. Um, I think he wanted to see whether they had done to Benjamin what they had done to him. Purely conjecture, purely opinion on my part. But whatever the case, this is his test. And it's a reasonable one from a strategic standpoint. It wouldn't be unusual if they said, hey, there's 12 of us in all, one of them's dead, the other one's at home. It, it wouldn't be unreasonable that that would be the test of their honesty. But Joseph obviously had more motive than that. I'm just guessing at what it was. <clears throat> Let me know your thoughts on that too. Why do you think he specifically asked for Benjamin to come? Verse 16, send one of you that he may get your brother while you remain confined that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you. And again, I think this is a character test. Did you do to Benjamin what you did to me? That's my opinion. I want to be very clear about that. But I think that's what's going on. But if not, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put down the line in the sand, threw down the gauntlet, whatever you want to say, here's how we're going to test you. So he put them all together in prison for three days. Interesting. So now he locks them up to stew, to plot, to figure things out, to test and observe them. You don't think Joseph had spies in the prison? I think he wanted to know what they were really thinking and throwing them in prison. They don't think anybody's listening. I imagine Joseph had servants that reported to him, yeah, here's what they said, or ooh, here's what happened, and we're going to learn a little bit about that later, but not today. Um, this video is long enough, so I'm going to leave you on another cliffhanger. But again, this is one of the most significant narratives, historical narratives in all of human history. So make sure if you want to catch the rest that you hit that like button. That one's just for me. Hit that subscribe button. Well, and for others because it helps. Hit that subscribe button. That's for you. Hit the bell icon. That one's really for you because if you don't hit that bell icon, YouTube's not going to tell you, hey, he uploaded a new video. Hit that bell icon to make sure to all to make sure that every time we post a video, you are notified, including the follow up to this video. As always, if you appreciate this ministry and content, please do those things and then hit that share button. That is the number one way to help us grow this channel. And if you want to support us financially, please do so. Even a dollar or two a month is helpful. And there's a link down in the description for that. All right, guys, thank you very much and God bless.